Welcome to another video. Today I'll be walking through a wonderful ancient forest with the hope of capturing a couple of woodland photographs. During the video I'll be talking about a couple of features that I'm really enjoying on the new Fuji X-H2. So all set up for my first composition of the afternoon and I'm pretty chuffed, I think this is quite a nice one to start the day off. I've got some wonderful backlighting which is really helping to set an ethereal tone to this image. On the left hand side we've got a birch tree, weathered and gnarly looking with its bark saturated from the morning rain that we've had. Beyond that we've got a birch sapling which sits just off to the left of centre of the frame and these gnarly twisted oaks pointing down towards that sapling help add a sense of depth to the image. I feel the eye has got somewhere to wander as it progresses through the frame, which is really nice. Beyond that, we've got a series of bushes and brambles and trees, which are about 20 meters or so away, so quite a, quite a distance. And that's helping us get a little bit of separation here in this very, very busy woodland. The backlighting coming through the trees is uh, changing minute by minute. Bit of an issue we've got is the wind and I have to bump my ISO up to ISO 500 because I felt the leaves were moving too much for the look I was going for. At F8 ISO 500 I'm at an eighth of a second so I think that just allows us a little bit of movement in the leaves without it being too distracting for this particular shot. So yeah, I think it's a, a nice one to start the day off and uh, have a little wander now see if we can find something else and then we'll talk a little bit about a couple of the features of this camera that i'm really enjoying over the previous models that i've owned so let's go ahead and take this one now focusing on the gnarly oak tree two second timer is on shade the lens a little bit got a little bit of flare coming through from the right hand side so i'm just covering the lens just a fraction to help reduce that flare but I've experimented with that as well because sometimes when you've got a bit of lens flare it can kind of add a bit more of an ethereal feel to the image so I've done some with and some without that light's coming back now just bumping my shutter speed up to a fifteenth of a second shielding the lens a bit that looks lovely fantastic fully polarized as well quick lens change and a wander of about 15 meters or so and I've got set up here for my second composition looking at these two wonderful mossy oaks which have their autumnal leaves on and look absolutely splendid these these trees are just covered in mosses and lichens and ferns and all sorts of wonderful little things that are clinging on to them and and creating their own little ecosystems it's absolutely wonderful we've got this amazing backlighting still similar position to before shooting the same way with the backdrop and depth that we had before now i've shot this composition before but from a different angle at a different time of year and in different lighting uh, conditions so it's a new one really but uh, the reason i swapped my lenses over is because 55 on the 1855 wasn't quite tight enough so I've put the 5140 in and just zoomed in ever so slightly. So let's talk about one of the things I absolutely love about this camera that's uh, an improvement over my previous model the X-T3 and that is the two second timer feature on this camera. A lot of people have asked me about this. You can now set the two second timer to stay on. So <laughs> just little things like that isn't it but that means such a, it's such a big deal for landscape photography you know when you want to keep using the two second timer every time you turn the camera off you had to reset it previously or if it went into power saving mode it would go back to the regular shooting mode so you'd have to reset the two second timer so i've actually got my two second timer programmed to one of the function buttons at the back so i can quickly quickly 
turn it on and off in the back of the screen there as required. So that's great. So pretty much when I'm basically walking around, shooting, working out my compositions, have it turned off, when I've got the camera on the tripod, I'm ready to take my final shot. I can set it so it's on and then it will stay on. So that is fantastic. And a massive, massive improvement over my previous model because that used to drive me mad. Anyway, I am going to grab this shot now. While well, the lighting is uh, pretty subdued, I've taken a few already. As the light, lighting changes, it makes such a difference to images like this when they're backlit. The contrast, the saturation, the separation, it all changes. So I'm taking several images, ISO 250 F8, tenth of a second, showing a little bit of movement in the leaves, hopefully, but not too much. Two second timer. Ah, yeah, very nice. So let's go and see if we can find another image before we lose light. Sunset's 4.30 now, so the nights are really drawing in here in the UK. Anyway, let's see if we can find another one. What an incredible area this is. Absolutely amazing. You could spend months down here just <laughs> looking for compositions. The mosses and the lichens and the colour, the vibrancy, the chaos as well. It is, you know, incredibly difficult to find a composition, but especially when you don't have any separation in terms of atmosphere, but wow, just stunning. I'm going to work on a few different spots here over the next 20 minutes or so. I'm sure I'll be able to find a composition and uh, yeah hopefully make another image wow this is just absolutely stunning absolutely incredible wow i think the word of the day is challenging as you can see i've got the brolly out which is helping to shield everything from the the rain it's been pretty heavy over the last hour or so and i've been scouting this area trying to piece things together it is just madness here but wow what a stunning incredible environment things happening all over the place but yeah trying to work a composition is particularly challenging but i have settled on one which is going to be my final image of the day and it's one which looks down this wonderful mossy valley to this oak tree on the left Got a splattering of different trees beyond that, some silver birch. I've got wonderful gauze bushes and heather, all sorts going on down there. It looks absolutely stunning. And this rain is helping to saturate the scene and add a little bit of atmosphere too to the background. Currently, I am at F9, one and a half seconds at ISO 320. So yeah, tells you how dark it is right now. The issue I have is the fern is moving ever so slightly and every, every now and again when we get a gust of wind. However, I don't think that is going to be too much of a problem. I don't mind because it kind of tells a story of how the day is progressing. The second thing I would like to share with you about this camera is the plethora of aspect ratios we have on offer. Uh, we now have 3 by 2 6 feet, 16 by 9 1 by 1 4 by 3 and 5 by 4 which are all aspect ratios I regularly shoot and I've got mine again set up here on one of the function buttons on the back so I can just tap it and change my aspect ratio here on the back of the camera which really helps with fine-tuning composition so if you have in your in your mind's eye that you want a 4 by 5 just being able to pop that on the screen there and change your aspect ratio to 4 by 5 is incredibly helpful now what that does to your raw file it embeds the crop into the raw file when you take it into Lightroom that crop is then 
embedded into your raw file in Lightroom, which is great because you can see exactly what you were composing in the field. Now it's non-destructive, so all you need to do is go up to the crop tool in Lightroom and you can see the original raw file, the size of the original raw file. Oh, I think this is really, really helpful and uh, yeah, I wish, uh, I wish my previous camera had as many aspect ratios as this. It would have been very, very helpful. Sometimes when I wanted to do a four by five, I kind of had to uh, put my hand up and just kind of gauge where you know where the uh, the composition was going to begin and end. So this is uh, yeah definitely a lot help more helpful. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, get this now while the light is pretty decent. I think flat but decent. Hope you enjoyed this week's video guys if you did please be sure to hit the thumbs up i'm told that really helps out also consider subscribing if you haven't done so already to see more content like this and if you'd like to support the channel why not check out the photographers clubhouse where we learn share and inspire one another to create amazing landscape photos at the end of the video i'll be displaying the 10 monthly challenge winners from the photographers clubhouse so be sure to stick around and check out those photos Anyway guys, until next week, take care and I'll see you soon.